explain a bit more of the frustration that you with this unique project doing genuine work keeping kids young people away from gangs crime dangerous situations that they could have Breaking seriously breaking down got. extremism we was also and so when you're a genuine grassroots project coming up meeting some of the institutions that exist in local government what does that speak to you and how has that sort of developed further how's that evolved to like some years down the road where you're not as active now with the project with what you're seeing in the community there was never any support from anyone two years we was in that first building and they never come up and never give it support we was in the other building as i just said the mayor of tower hamlets come to us didn't give us no support the now mayor who was sacked luther Rahman, give us awards put us in the paper with a cheque and then took the awards back off us twice. That was before he got kicked out of the council. And then five years later, he'd done his ban and now he's the mayor again. You know, we have been through so much. We've had everything thrown at us. They wanted the project to stop many, many years ago. But because I knew that, and I knew that they wanted it. They didn't want us there helping the kids. They didn't want us, there. we don't want you to help the kids. We'll help the kids in our way. You know, just don't help them, let them be on their own. And you know, they never even come up and said to us like, there's a space for you to come and work with a group of kids. The minute that they give us a space back in the early days, we was working in the workhouse, brilliant project. Hundreds of kids showing up. It wasn't even our building, it was in the workhouse in Poplar High Street. They stopped the project. Why? Why would you want to stop a project that is integrating communities, breaking down postcode walls, breaking down barriers for the wider community? Why wouldn't you want that to continue? What, what is the hidden agenda really behind it? 2012. You know, we've got the videos of that, you know, it was a brilliant project. What they said, we want you to work with the kids from Poplar Arca. And the minute people heard that Factory East was running a project at, uh, at the workhouse, started coming from everywhere. They didn't like it. No, 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 that's not what it's about, it's for these kids in this area. I said, but we're an organisation that's known to work and break down barriers with postcode walls and get the kids to know each other. And it was like, look, we don't want the kids to know each other sort of thing. It's just been a, a an headache and, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I nearly had a mental breakdown over it all, you know, like uh, in the end, that, that, that's what happened. I had to pull away from it because my mental health, myself, after giving all the love and the care to, I could to everyone else, uh, I didn't get a bit back myself and in the end, I, how, how much more can a man take? You know, you've got to throw the towel in, you know, as much as it kills me to, to think that's what I had to do because of my limited support. No one caring really about the effort that I've put in. Oh, he's a nut, I leave him to get on with it. And then... So you would say that your situation of being genuine from the actual position of what a lot of the young people face in their lives that almost didn't work for them because it was never seen as part of their in-house sort of offering that, that could be completely contained and yeah. controlled according to whatever their policies were. Exactly. And what it is, is that what it is, we're just a normal grassroots organisation. We're not working with kids so that we can go and tell towels on them very crucial point we're working with kids to change their lives we're not working with them to grass them up and change their towels as when we lost the first building and uh, uh, Deluxe give us a space in a studio at Mile End there it was brilliant we had all the kids come in there it was all music and then one day the guys in the building where we were said uh, we're going to have stop and search now so I went, well, that didn't used to happen here before. Why is all of a sudden you're going to have stop and search? Like, and they went, well, we're going to have stop and search because, you know, the kids have got to know, like, uh, 
they can't come here with drugs or they can't come here with knives. I said, but they don't come here with drugs and they don't come here with knives. Have, have you had any one, have you had any incidents with knives or drugs or anything? No, you haven't. So basically, I said to the group of lads, look, you're going to have a stop and search. They said, we're not coming here no more. And before you knew it, no one wanted to come to the place because they felt that I'd betrayed them by taking them to a place where they're going to be, the authorities are going to be waiting for them to get them into trouble. If they do have a little split or they have got whatever on them, you know, but my rules was, you know my rules, be nice or leave. That was the only rule I needed in my place. There wasn't anything, it wasn't, and we had the worst gang kids that you could even imagine coming up there and, you know, turning them into singers and turning them into creative, you know, like individuals, not rather than like the mindset that they've got, you know, coming out and, you know, it was all about positivity and that's all it's ever been about. It's just about positivity, it ain't about nothing else, you know. And uh, like I said, you up the 12 years of doing it and knowing that I was defeated and my mum, like, she's getting old now and she said to me, son, you've done a lot for this community and you need to start thinking about yourself again and, you know, you're undernourished and you, you don't look well anymore. You, you know, like you're stressed out all your time and you're battling this battle that you're never going to win. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, like, I knew she was right. That's why two years ago I decided to sort of, like, hang the gloves up a bit and, you know what I mean, try to focus a bit on myself and try to get my mental health back together and, because it was a lot of stress for me, to be honest, you know. It was a, lo a lot, you know. It's all right having a little, you won an award, like, and they're all right, but then, you know, that's, like I said, it's just for people to tick boxes, you know, and say, oh, we give them an award, because there's nothing ever has come juicy out of it. Really, from all the work I've done in London, they should have threw a building at me, or they should have threw 10 buildings at me and said to me, what? work in this deprived areas and help us. But that option never comes.